Hello everybody and welcome to Theory the Awakening Multiplayer. Now, um, I was allowed to play this with Avak on Sunday, I was fortunate enough to be asked, and we had a blast playing this, it was really really good. And I am doing this from the future by the way, this is a, a post-recorded intro so in case you wonder why I'm talking about what happened and is going to happen next, so that's a bit weird isn't it? Just to let you know that the game is from a couple of different perspectives and this is going to be my perspective. Um, there were people in the stream asking, where's SheLab stream? Unfortunately I didn't have good enough internet to really do a lot of streaming at the moment so I wasn't able to, to show my perspective so hopefully this will make up for that. But for those of you who are just watching on my channel and haven't seen me do any sort of streaming before, please be aware that this is not going to be the normal sort of quality of recording that I do on a day-to-day -day basis so it's not going to have the intro, it's not going to have the outros. Hopefully I'll sound like I'm having fun because I did have a lot of fun but I, I think that it might just be a little bit different to what you expect normally so just be prepared for that. Also because it was a stream and we were just jumping straight into it we didn't really do a lot of explaining about what the fights were or anything like that so go and check out Avak's channel if you want to know a little bit more about how the the fights work what the tactics are all that sort of thing I'm not sure that I was playing particularly tactically because I'm fairly new to the game but if you want to see how to play it a little bit better and understand what's going on then if you go and watch that first that will probably clue you in a little bit on on how to play so without further ado let's get on with it i hope you enjoy i hope you have fun and i hope you consider maybe having a little go at thea because it's a really cool game so i'll see you in there okay uh looks like our two cities oh wow your city's amazing. Oh, what You've have got I got? Three different food sources. Oh, nice. Three different food sources. Vegetable. And I've got grain and herbs grain. and grain. Well, we know what you'll. I'll be trading to you then. <laughs> I've got grain and grain. And I've got Seriously, nuts game. And string quite close too. That is so. Yes. That is so annoying. I can't combine these in any meaningful way. Early on, I flat out can't combine them in any way until I research baked goods. Well, you know that what the first research such, point you get is going to go to. Don't you? Such a mean thing to have done. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're never far apart, Sumi, and all of the the um, tests that we've done of just generating maps and um, just trying to record the game. We have never had our villages further apart than this. It just seems that you always start close to each other. And that's nice, because uh, right. you can cooperate easier that way. Yes, and there is a lot of co-op involved in this game. There is a lot of co-op. Right, we're going to get uh, to renaming. Okay. I don't know if the Tupnix is still here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have all of my people join the Vacus and then I can manage everything. I think I'll do the same. Right, okay. Agatka, let's see. Right. Moogly Moo shall be Agatka. I'm going to be renaming people from Steam, uh, sorry, um, Twitch chat. Uh, I believe Lady Sheelove has generated a name list from her. I have, for my subscribers. Subscribers. We will have. I'm just going to get the uh, units named and then we'll go through the names that I've chosen. Buttercup. Hello, Buttercup, by the way. Okay. Wow, Ride of the Valkyries? I think one, two, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Six out of my ten people are women. Oh, wow. There we go, Izda. You have been named Goran. I don't even know if Garun is here, but that, the names are too similar for me to pass it up. Umbal. There we go. I've named all of my all of my people. All right. 
Right, let's have a quick mm -hmm. look through. And by quick, I probably Just getting my list up here and trying to type in as quickly as I can. Which no, is not very okay. quickly at all. <laughs> That's alright, it's not a problem. I have my microphone right over my keyboard. It makes it kind of hard to type sometimes. I'm good for WASD, but the rest... <laughs> Yeah. But that's the beauty of turn-based games. Indeed. Thank you very much, Al Young, for the subscription there. Very much appreciated indeed. There we go. Right, so my uh, warrior focus means that I've started with four warriors, two gatherers, and two crafters. Some oh actually I was gonna say oh, I've got some gathering on my warriors, but of course I do. We're playing with Mokosh. Mokosh, rather, or Mokosh. Okay, I think I'm nearly there. I'm just having a look over my characters at the moment. Now for anyone who's watching this after the fact on YouTube, understand that one of the, the quirks with multiplayer means that it is going to be a little bit harder for us to talk in detail about what we're doing on either screen, um, especially in fights and that sort of thing, or in events. In events, it's going to be a little bit easier. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. And fortunately, the way the, the game plays, it in some ways, it feels like it's just two single-player games that are kind of tethered together, and you're playing these single-player games in the same world. Um, but there are certain ways that the, the game, you know, properly integrates the idea of multiplayer. It's just not all of them. And one of the ones that, that I've already mentioned to the developers is a little bit jarring, is the way that when certain things happen on your uh, co-op partner's screen, like if they're in a fight or if they're resolving an encounter that, or a random event, if you will, you can't see that. You can't see it at all. You'll get a little notification down at the bottom saying they've entered combat or they're resolving an event, but you don't know what that event is. And that has two side effects. One is the kind of Marmite level voice acting, because some people mm. don't get on with the voice acting, but some people really love it because it's quirky and yet fitting in different ways. I, I happen to be among the, those who really get on with the voice acting. But as a result, because the other person won't know when there's any voice acting going on, they can easily be talking over the voice acting, which kind of ruins things. And yeah, so nothing as a result, more annoying is there than like voice acting going yeah. on and in a game, especially when it's like an MMO and you, you're on TeamSpeak with people or something and they're like chatting to you and you're like, I need to listen to this. Yeah, no, exactly. So as a result, we've turned off all voice acting and we'll read out options and encounters and, and um, we'll collaborate in picking the options that we go for and we'll discuss them and, and that way there'll be an extra layer of um, interaction between the players. What I would love to see is specifically with decisions, like I don't know how the really big like um, main story quest decisions are going to work. Is it just all going to be down to the person who encounters it? Are they the one who just decides? Because for those who, who aren't aware, there are some very specific points in the story where you can kind of go down one path or another and it has vast effects, you know, permanent consequences. I'm looking for forward to seeing that. Other. Well, yeah, and if it is literally just the person who happened to be the one to trigger the event, that leaves the other person kind of mopping up the leftovers, even if they didn't want to pick that path. One of the, the MMOs you, you mentioned, actually, um, that is MMOs in general, but uh, there are some MMOs that have that kind of um, quality where there'll be kind of a mini game or a voting system mm. where if the players involved don't agree, then they kind of go at a battle of wits to work it out. Uh, Divinity Original Sin had a very simple system of rock, paper, scissors. You played rock, paper, scissors to work out I played that. That's a nice choice game. would go. That was a really yeah. nice game. That would be pretty cool, but we'll have to see because we, we haven't tested it that far to actually see how that works. Um, have you renamed all of your characters? I have indeed renamed all of my characters. Would you okay. like me to read out who they are? Or? Yep, yeah, by all means. That would be lovely. Okay. So I have Elfwine. 
for Taurus, Maro, and Renard, who are all warriors. I have Cathy okay. Osborne and Lolash, who are my gatherers. And I have okay. Kristen and Minnie Manta, who are my crafters. Crafters. Excellent. I have got for warriors Buttercup, Dappling, Fitzomega, and Moogly Moo. I choose to believe Buttercup is obviously the princess from Princess Bride. Um, we're going to need to, to find ourselves a Dread Pirate Roberts and a Physic, and oh, it's going to be great. Uh, Physic, rather. Um, we have got for gatherers, Edel and Isda, and for crafters, Anbal and Guru. Now, with that being said, as I mentioned, I'm kind of... <laughs> I've, I've, I've really got the, 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 the poor end of the stick here because my you brain... Have cannot work in cooked me in the cooked meals that I've got just regular cooked meals I'm going to have to spend my first research point on crafting and getting baked goods I literally have no choice it is an it is a must for me to have any kind of cooked food ah game you 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 scuppered me from the onset right I did start with a little bit of meat though which is nice so I can set up some some meat being made but actually I'll, I'll spend the first turn gathering and things like that how about you what, what are you going to spend your first research well, on I've just popped some people in to gather wood and herbs and vegetables and things I've not got anyone gathering grain and then hopefully we can maybe trade that later if okay. I stockpile yeah. up the herbs and vegetables and then you can have something to actually make meals with um, sure. research wise let's have a look I'm trying to balance out my gathering a little bit because, unfortunately, grain, you know, is not an easy thing to gather. Vegetables would have been ideal. Uh, I don't have inventory to really make anything at the moment. I've actually got a reasonably difficult start. Well, that's good, because you're the one that's good at the game, so, you know. Oh, I wouldn't go so that I'm far. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I'm Thank you I... for your vote of confidence, but... Yes. Uh, I, I believe you are you. mistaken. Uh, I'm going to go, I think, maybe with um, vines. They, they're quite good for making uh, armor and things, yes, aren't they? Yes, actually. Vines, Pick up vines a few are of them. not bad at all. They're Let's also go pretty good for bows as well. So I'm going to be really boring, and the first couple of turns are just going to be gathering for me and, and a little bit of crafting as well. Uh, oh, don't quite have so I'm just going to gather for the first turn or two and not bother crafting, and I'm going to make a little expedition party to start with. Okay. Right, I'm going to go ahead and end my turn. Now, this is the thing with ending turns. One of the, the little um, issues with this is when I end my turn, the only thing I can do in the game is toggle resources on not off. That's the only thing that does anything at all. Everything else is completely locked out. I can't even look at the quest log. I can't look at research. I, For all intents and purposes my game has frozen from this point on. Now, the nice thing is it does let me know what's happening. I do see things moving around still and changes to the game world, but for all intents and purposes, I can do nothing, which is one of the key reasons why we had a little bit of trouble with trying to do a recording of this in a, in a traditional kind yeah. of YouTube way. Completely. I'm just trying to clear the fog of war off a bit between our two uh, towns with the expedition there, so hopefully you can see... Excellent. I don't know how how does that affect the fog of war for you? Yeah, it, it's gone for me as well. Fantastic. I can see some exotic fruit there, which will be good because I can make with fruit. I can make different types of breads. I think. Right. Well, that's the end of my turn. Okay. You've got some enemies coming your way. Yeah, I've just made a new piece of equipment. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to get this though. It's probably going to be quite light. So you've got ten armor. You've got seven, nine, seven. Um, I'm going to give it to you. There you go. It's a, uh, sorry, Airedale can have the uh, the leather shirt that I've just produced. Now, crafting is one of the main ways to get additional um, uh, resources. Uh, research, that is. I'm going to make another leather shirt using some of my leather as a catalyst. It's basically fuel for all intents and purposes. Yeah. It's not going to give me very much research, but it's going to give someone an extra two points of armor. So, I'm Yeah, it's well. definitely worth doing. I mean, I think 
Um, with me, I'm just gathering because I've left my by making an expedition party. I've left my village without like any wood, so I'm just leaving everyone on gathering until they've built up a little bit of supplies. And then I'll start to move someone onto crafting in a turn or two. Mm-hmm. On the plus side, and this is one of the reasons why we considered. Uh, doing this on stream rather than in a YouTube environment is, well, I've got nothing to do, I can look over at chat and actually read through chat. So the stream is probably going to be a little bit more engaged with the chat than usual, even though I always try to engage with chat, but uh, I'll have a little bit more downtime in which I can uh, read things, because I read really slowly when it's English, unfortunately. When the rest of you scrubs going to learn to speak Welsh, <laughs> I just don't know. I, Welsh is hard, it's got all these weird letters that I can't pronounce. Oh, Hush your mouth! How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to end the turn there because I just want to leave my people on gathering until they're okay. ready. Um, now there's some really nice additions to this outside of the, the multiplayer aspect of the DLC. Just tweaks to the base game. There's a lot of new uh, graphics. They look amazing. But also, we now get a resource income report to tell us how much uh, stuff we gathered on that last turn. Not just what we crafted and I think that is amazing. There you go. Anbal gets that. Right. Just checking the expedition's food. No, I should at this point be able to start making some baked wow. meals. Right. I'm gonna go and deal with your monsters outside your base. Oh no, my EXPs! They're being robbed! Would you like me to leave your EXPs? Um, you're calling my bluff now. I'm on to you. I don't uh, mind. No, no. By, by all means. No, <laughs> I'm teasing. By, by all means. I would hate to be accused of stealing, kill stealing in, in Thea. <laughs> in Thea, yeah. The whole world is against us. Woo! Ah, you've stolen my kill, you swine. Uh, right, let's. I'm going to turn off my dark wood consumption. I don't want to be using that up. Thank you very much. Right, now. The other player is resolving an event. Basically, Shelab has gone into a fight. Now, we can't see what's going on. Also, Avakis is out of fuel. They're very unhappy. There's going to yeah. be riots in the street. Thankfully, there's not going to be any firebombs because we've run out of fuel. <laughs> but Tumnix has run out of fuel as well, So um, because I put it all onto the expedition party. So they better hurry uh, up and chop some, some more trees down, go. basically. Interestingly, if you... Oh, right, you can't click on it right now. But although the, uh, the, the title of your town has not synchronized and updated from mm -hmm. renaming it. If I click on your town, it actually gives you me the correct name that. of the yeah. town mix. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right, so I approach my enemy and I've got time to decide my plan of action, but it has only actually given me one plan of action, which is saying that planning is for weaklings and I need to attack. So there we go, we're gonna do that. Bas basically, that's the Thea's equivalent of nerds! And then just Leroy Jenkins straight into the fight. Pretty much. Hi, Arkham. So, I'm going to put Elfwine in first. Um, and then let the enemy take their turn. They've given me a witch to fight. Okay. But In answer to Fenoa, who was asking, how does combat work? Can we collaborate in the same fight? Unfortunately, not. I no. can't even watch the fight. And that's one of the, the things that I've fed back to the dev, saying that you know, outside of any kind of level of interaction, it would be great if you could simply observe. Like, if down here, this didn't just show me that my um, co-op partner was in a fight, but rather I could click on it and see what they're seeing. Just as purely as an observer, it would massively improve the experience. Okay, so just to let my guys know, um, with the fight, I have just confused the hulking rat, which means it will skip a turn. That's what Excellent. confused does, just in case anyone wondered. Well. The way that fights are split up is, is um, each combat round is split into playing your cards and there's a whole lot of um, you know uh, things that govern that, like initiative and, and how many cards in your deck you've got to play. But once you've put all of the cards down, then there's two combat phases. And confuse means that a card will skip the first combat phase completely and it can be a huge advantage. Wow, they played all of their... Um all of their tactical decks onto the field. Oh, so uh, they've actually 
when you play a tactical card into combat, it starts confused. So um, whenever you enter a combat, uh, although you can't see on my screen at the moment, uh, you have all of the cards, or rather all of the, the, the people in your party, are split between two types of groups. Your offensive group and your tactical group. Your offensive group can just be played into the battle and they'll immediately act on the first combat phase. But a tactical card that's played into the battle, instead of using its tactical abilities to in some way either debuff the enemy or buff its allies, will join the fight physically, but will skip the first turn. It will always start confused. So, yeah. you know, it gets half as much worth out of its uh, combat abilities. Okay, so I've gone into a second turn. I've played Marrow and Fatoris as my uh, main offensive cards and put massive shields on them, and they've now managed to get it down to just one rat left. Unfortunately, um, I have taken wounds in that fight. One thing I will say, Fino, um, Fino says in chat that uh, I'm really glad the imp they've implemented multiplayer, as I never thought it would be possible. It just seems that they've implemented it poorly. I, I would step in and say whilst... It's certainly not optimal. Uh, th there are issues with, with engagement and that sort of thing. The, in terms of the net code, it's incredibly stable. There's been no problem at all with any kind of drops or desyncs, that sort of thing. Well, you know, the renaming notwithstanding. But whilst, yes, there's, there's certainly room for improvement, this is, from what I can tell, really, a first iteration. And it's free DLC as well. Um, yeah. So there's a lot to be said for that. They've not added any extra charge to have the multiplayer. And I fully expect that they will continue to iterate on this, as they have on the base game, you know, throughout its existence. They, they've, they've been really, really active in tweaking and improving the base game. They're always adding assets. They're, they're improving the UI. I strongly suspect that adding an observation feature will probably be coming sooner rather than later. Oh, maybe that's just me hoping for it, but um, I would be surprised if that wasn't something that they consider strongly. Okay, I just camped my guys so that um, I took a couple of wounds. I took two wounds. So they're all camped so that, that the wounds can be healed up before they oh, move okay. on again. Excellent. Right, I have gathered some more grain. Fantastico. Uh, and people have no fuel, so they're not happy, but at least they're not starving, which, you know... Yeah, I just swapped my best gatherer onto wood gathering so that they would be a bit less um, unhappy with the whole yeah. fuel situation. Because um, there is... Well, we've got seven wood in the town, so it's it's not too bad. Would you like my expedition to come and trade you some wood in a second? Just a little bit to keep you going. I should be okay. I should be able to get a, a load of wood in one turn, mm -hmm. and then I've kind of swapped things around. Now, the, the thing with fuel is that if you run out of food, your people start to starve and will die. If you run out of fuel, nothing bad happens. They won't heal, but if they're not hurt, that doesn't hurt them. However, they will gather and craft at half speed, and that does hurt. So uh, bear that in mind with, with anything like that. But I'm actually going to make my own... Uh, right, everyone's healed I, now. That's good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pass one more turn. I'm sorry, my turns are really boring this early on. But I'm going to pass one more turn in order to build up a little bit of fuel. Then I'm going to be able to send an expedition out with enough fuel to start with. Yeah. I mean, I just gave my expedition all my my starting wood. So that's what they've got at the moment. Um, they've only camped once. Is it only when they camp that they use the wood up or is it as they move? Every turn every turn right. whether they're in a camp or not so they've got another four turns worth of wood before they need to gather some more yeah okay cool i don't believe that you have any option to um camp in your allies village no camp uh you can trade but you can't enter the village proper and help defend it or anything like that though that being said if you're group is standing on the village tile and something attacks the village i believe they have to resolve the combat with whatever group is active on the map before they can attack the village itself yeah so you can effectively body block an attack 
with your expedition. Or you can from just like, do what I did and just clear things as they're approaching the other vi- the other village and yeah. stop them from coming in. Absolutely, yeah. Right. right. Uh, let's see. Route. Mushrooms. Okay. Thank you very much for the subscription, Fitz Omega. Still moving. Let's get some loving chat for Fitz today. I think I'll just still keep them on gathering for a little bit longer. So yeah, I'll end the turn there. Okay. Yay, we've got some bread, we've got some wood, Ooh. everything is going good. Cooked food the for you, that's advanced. <laughs> you mock me. I have not. You mock my pain. Uh, right, I need to make a new expedition at last. And I am going to send out one of my crafters. I am going to send... Uh, Anbal, as she has better armor and damage than Garoon. In terms of gatherers, I will send one person. I'm going to send Buttercup, Fitzomega, Moogly Moo, whose name I adore. Um, hmm. That being I'll said, my inventory. yeah, I'll send Airedale as well. I'm a little bit concerned about leaving. Now I'm going to leave Fitzomega back at Avakis as well, so I'll have two warriors, a gatherer and a crafter at Avakis, and two warriors, a gatherer and a crafter in the scouts expedition. Uh, actually, I'm going to give this a name from chat as well. Okay, oh, I'm fine I wanted to crafting. name it Clock Eyes Marauders, but I can't. <laughs> Not terrible. enough characters. No, it's 15 characters. Oh. I should have read that first. <laughs> Ooh. Boo. The dudes, dudes. That's where I'll go with. Even though I'm fairly certain the majority. In fact, none of the dudes, dudes are dudes. None uh, of the dudes, dudes with, are dudes. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with irony. I see. Um, you know, just, you know, accidentally irony. It's the best form of irony, I think. Uh, we will take all of the bread. That'll give me two turns worth of food. No, okay. We'll take some meat as some well. Vegetables. Um, I have a lot of meat um, in my city. Is that starting meat? Yeah, that's I certainly starting don't have resources. It. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, there we go. Now, the first thing I like to do with any group is to make sure that they don't use any new types of fuel. They're only free to use the fuel that I sent them out with, and that is about basic wood. I'm off fighting again, by the way. Oh, best of luck. I am fighting some, I think it's skeletons. There's some bats to the side as well. Just some of the roaming groups. I'm not actually hitting any of the nests, because I believe that that can cause um, higher level nests to spawn, and I don't really want that. Yeah, the way that the nests work... Um, Effectively, any ruin, which is these like um, treasure chests or nest, when you defeat one, another one will spawn somewhere else in the world on the next turn, I believe. Um, I don't think that's the case with mobs. Like, if you kill a mob, uh, like a, an, a roaming group, another one will spawn from one of the nests in the world. I'm not sure if that's the case. I think the nests have like a timer. And that timer gets shorter the longer the game's gone on, so the world gets progressively more difficult, I believe. But in so far as the nest automatically triggering a new nest once it's gone, that is more or less agreed to be the case, uh, at least as far as the forums and that sort of thing. Um, the way that uh, the, the nests build up, though, is that if you've got a nest with one skull, it'll produce one skull um, wandering groups. Yeah. Which as is what I'm fighting game, right now. Yeah. As the game goes through, though, and progresses, the difficulty of the world increases, so that any new nest will be two skull nests, and eventually three skull nests. If you kill a one skull nest at that point, the new nest it spawns may be a harder nest, which will produce harder groups. So you can inadvertently make your job a little bit harder over time. How's your fight going, though? Um, okay, I've confused everything so that it's all missing turns to start with. Okay. Um, taking a bit of damage there. Just got through Marrow's shield, so he's just down to his health now. But okay. we've got everything except for... Oh, and we've got through it without him 
yeah, he's getting another turn now, so he'll regenerate his shield. Because what happens is you get two passes of um, attacking the enemies, and then you get to sort of um, get a chance of reshuffling the deck and going through it again. So, and every time that happens, you regenerate your shield. So I was really lucky there. Marrow literally had nothing left on his shield at the end of that second pass. <laughs> so, phew. He'll be okay, he won't get any wounds unless he gets some now, but he shouldn't do. Well done. I'm going to jump into an encounter. Stumble across some ruins of an old city engulfed in mist and mystery, of which there are many in theatre, it seems. Search. You search the ruins and find an interesting building to explore, but it seems half submerged in water. As you enter, a creature comes out from the waters to attack you. So I'm in a fight as well with a butter pick and three warped snakes. Wish me luck. Ooh, good luck with those. I've got some decent cards, so I may be okay. But that being said, there they are. Oh, actually, not bad at all. In many ways, this is an ideal engagement for me. Fab, I just won my fight. I got a, a shield out of it. Oh, drat. Drat, drat, drat. The enemy just got... Uh, moved forward. I'm going to confuse Ooh. the enemy for the first round, I think. Yeah, it's really helpful, that. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to cause me some issues. Uh... I'm going to have Buttercup join from the tactical deck. Oh, fantastic movement. Done very well for ourselves, eh? Very surprised. Fantastic. Well done. One wound we suffered. Oh, Here that's really not bad. Moment. That's just a, a turn of camping, isn't it? Yeah. I was expecting that to be a lot but worse, but uh, I also managed to get a sword, 16 quarts and 5 gold, which is, you know... Oh, that's nice. Say, so, yeah, I, I just got a shield from the uh, my fight. That wasn't too great. Pretty standard sword, all things told. Very standard sword. Come on. It's a shield with two armor on it, which is no better than anything else I've already got. I'm thinking I would very much like to harvest some food and some more wood, because I've not got enough wood in this group. So I'm going to camp. I'm going to gather a little bit. Um, I'll gather some wood first, and I'll also start gathering some nuts, since they're going to be easier to gather. Um, I think you mentioned before that I could break down um, useless equipment. Yes. You do it from the equipment screen of your group. Yep. Uh, sorry, no, your inventory screen. Oh, the inventory screen, right, okay. Yes. And on the left, you'll see drop here to destroy and drop here to dismantle. Ah, so drop it in there to dismantle, and I will get the exactly. components back. Very yeah. nice. So that gives some extra wood. Keeps them going for a few more turns without having to camp. Okay, yeah. I'm ready to end my turn. Uh, Fitz Omega, I'm not actually sure how the group... Um... Oh. Thank you very much for the donation there my lord thank you very very much md72 a just donated 50 pounds oh yay, wow multiplayer with she lab yay for everybody donating to avac <laughs> uh, i see how this is gonna be it's like she where's, where's my heart where's my cut <laughs> what you're not giving me a cut well I, it's, oh. my gratitude <laughs> you don't have to give me a cut it's okay oh now oh, now i have to <laughs> now, now you put it like that. I'm on to you. Bloody guilt. But, uh, right, so the way that the group limit works is previously I could have taken, if I had 20 cards in my group, all 20 of them would be in play. So I'd have 10 on what, in my combat deck, 10 in my tactical deck. However, that does lead to a point where, you know, where's the limit? You know, you end up going with 40 cards. Not only is it just silly because you're going to be able to steamroll over any challenge, but also it's going to be incredibly hard to play the card you want to play because you won't be able to see them all. So the limit we've got is 16. So it means you'll have eight on each 
deck at most. And if you've got more people in your group than 16, anyone who isn't randomly chosen to join in the combat will be put in the discard pile. Now, the question that was asked is, is that per combat round or for the entire engagement? Um, uh, effectively, 16 people will be picked for the entire engagement and everyone else will sit the entire thing out. Or, like some people get wounded in the first round, would you be able to basically restock them, basically have um, subs take their place? I'm not sure, but it'll be really interesting to find out on that. Hmm. Okay, time for me to go and get these, what are they? Crazed bees. Have you ever fought crazed bees before? Uh, bees are generally quite nasty because they can, uh, they usually have piercing damage, like all of them. Ooh. So I try to avoid bees early on, uh, unless I've got like uh, blunt weapons. Okay, I may maybe ignore them for a while then. We'll go and explore a bit more. Okay. Let's see what's I'm about. Bringing in a decent amount of fuel now. I think I'll leave that going though for the time being. Production has stopped. Uh, you can work on that. There we go. Perfect, we'll get uh, some food being made as well. Righty ho! Uh... Okay, so if I'm not gonna have the uh, attack the crazy bees, then that's the end of my turn for now. Okay. I'm going to march on down and attack. Uh, explore this ruin down here. Did Stumble you get across some ruins. Uh, yep, yeah, of an old city engulfed in mist and mystery. Search. And there was no one to attack. The search buildings and discovery supply store still intact. Eight exotic fruit, two vines, and seven iron. That's ah, super bad. lucky. I know. Didn't, didn't even have to do a fight. Now, if I move up there. It's going to take me two turns to move there because all of this is rough terrain. Marshes, forest, and hills. That's mm, horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it means I'm not really going to be able to do anything with my bloody turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up camp there and immediately harvest some more wood since at least that's going to be helpful to me. Yeah. There we go. Uh, it asks Rayshoff, who says, You sure have been playing this a lot, Lady Havoc. Are you enjoying it that much? Uh, yes, actually, I am. I love this game. Uh, this this is firmly up there with, with like, oh, let's, let's think of it. Civilization Five is an obvious comparison from the way you move around, but I would say I have much more fun with this than, than a game like Civilization Five. Although Civilization Five is, is a larger um, kind of scale, and perhaps because of that, I prefer this because I care about my units more. It's I much level more personal, my units isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I don't know. I, I really like the the mixture of RPG elements. That's one of the things right. I like about RimWorld is like you have your individual people rather than just I don't care yes. about you. You can just be thrown away. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that took me two. That would take me three. I'm going to wander around near to uh, the Tumnix and see if maybe I can discover any more ruins. Yeah. But for this turn, I am going to gather. In fact, I'm probably going to end up gathering for two turns here just so I get a bunch of uh, exotic fruit. And, and there's something that, that looks like ruins poking out just, to, just uh, to the right of you sort of thing. Yeah. On that note, I'm actually going to restrict the consumption of my exotic food because I want to take that back to Avakis. I think I have everyone doing what I want them to do. Uh, my expedition can actually move a little bit further. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean, Cal. Al is asking if I'm going to death parade past Shelab ever. I, I have no idea what, what, what you mean by that question. Does that mean that the enemies are meant to attack me? Because they will attack me. I'm pretty sure. I, I have no clue what, they, what they're trying to ask. Um, right, I need to pass another turn. 
Sparked out circuit says, wait, you're not supposed to sacrifice colonists in Ringworld. Oops. <laughs> oh dear. No, they're your personal little th- little people that you've got to look after. Gee. I mean, I mean, it depends. Uh, if if the colony's name is New Camaraderie, then it is a valid option. <laughs> Was that your uh, cannibal Cyborg one? Cyborg cannibal colony, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Oops. Okay. I'm gonna try and get a little bit more into this uh, fog of war. I'm I'm in full on explore mode at the moment. It's allowing us to see a lot more of the resources, which is cool. Um, you can go a little bit further there. Let's see if we've got any herbs out. gathered yet. There's so much grain. We do. I played maps where grain is like there's like three places in the entire world that you get grain. That's all <laughs> that there is to get here. Bloody grain. No one likes you grain. Not even bakers. Let's get someone gathering wood again. Uh, Lolash gathering wood. Okay, done. 